Vercel just bought Tremor UI library and it's an open source React Tailwind library that's built for charts and dashboards. It's a neat looking library. As you can see here, we have some chart examples, then also this some kind of form like with inputs and select boxes, etc. Here some buttons and bunch of components and also an interesting thing. And here we have your first dashboard. So we have some nice templates that we can use for development of some projects that we want to start. So this is one good looking dashboard. Now, the thing that I don't understand is why did they make this acquisition? Why they bought Tremor UI component library when they have almost the exactly the same ecosystem with ShadCN. So here, for example, if we go to area chart and if we check the installation, it's using rich charts exactly the same like ShadCN is using under the hood. Then, for example, if we go to the label component here, we can see that it is using Redix UI React label again, exactly the same like ShadCN. So what is actually behind this and why did they bought Tremor UI? Let's see what do they have to say about this. So here, this is the blog and the announcement from Russell that they acquired Tremor to invest in open source React components and they are announcing that they bought it and that Tremor is an open source library built on top of React, Tailwind CSS and Redix, same like some other library that I know. And it consists of 35 unique components and 300 blocks. So they have also the block thing, same like ShadCN. And that's, I mean, that's good. I like Tremor and don't get me wrong. It's not like that I'm talking against Tremor. I'm just trying to see what's happening with Vercel and why they decided now like to not to leave ShadCN, they're not going to leave it and they're using it in V0 and I think that's not going to change. But why are they now announcing this and using Tremor instead of ShadCN? That's a good question. And this is what they said. So we're thrilled to be joining Vercel and bringing our React components and templates to their ecosystem together we will deliver on our joint mission of equipping developers with the tools they need to build the best UIs possible. And congratulations, Tremor. This is really great for you. The Vercel is sitting currently on the mountain of gold. They are the best probably currently in this business. So that's really great news, really nice. And let's see, so what's the difference and what is actually Tremor doing? So unlike visual dashboard builders, Tremor provides developers with a toolkit of modular accessible UI elements, offering greater flexibility and control when creating dashboards. We heard the word dashboard multiple times here. So we could say that Tremor is some kind of shed CN going into the dashboard direction. I mean, ShedCN also has dashboard blocks and bunch of stuff, but maybe not the same like Tremor here. And uh, let's say so Vercel's acquisition of Tremor will provide developers with more tools to build UIs. So we have open source Tremor blocks, which is great. We're definitely going to try this. And along with Tremor's NPM package, that is also interesting and copy paste components. Tremor's pro product Tremor blocks will be free and open source for all users under an MIT license. This is the good opportunity for us to try and compare Tremor versus ShedCN to create a video maybe of creating a dashboard with Tremor and then creating a dashboard with ShedCN to see the differences. And is it easier maybe with Tremor to create a dashboard? I would really like to see it. And second thing we have here is the Vercel dashboard. So Severin and Christopher, the developers from Tremor, are going to contribute their expertise from Tremor to enhance the Vercel dashboard. That's really great. I'd like to see that dashboard after their upgrade. And the third thing, which is really important, is V0. So Tremor's component library will enhance V0, our generative UI system. So you know V0 from my videos probably, and like in general, you probably used it. Then it's going to enable the creation of more complex and data-rich interfaces from simple text prompts. So they're going to use it in V0. That's probably good news because when we have like the versatility of different components, 
we are going to get better results in the end. So for us, it's probably better. And it's using the same ecosystem again, like ShedCN. So we have Radix and a bunch of stuff. Maybe even they decide to mix it up somehow. I don't know. We'll still have to see that one. And I guess they're going to create here in V0 a starter template with Tremor for a dashboard because they already have it. As you can see here, they have Next.js plus ShedCN, forms, charts. And this is using ShedCN. Each template is using ShedCN. So they're probably going to create more templates with Tremor. And in the end, that's again a good thing for us because we can choose whatever we want. We can use whatever technology we want. It's up to us. So for developers, it's better to have more sources of different UI components and everything. And I want to share with you one thing that I didn't like with Tremor and that's the installation process and the whole importing of components. So I'm going to choose here Next.js and we can go through the installation process. I'm going to show you why I don't like it. So here we are installing a bunch of dependencies and then we need to install everything for our components. So in case we want the checkbox, we need to install Redix UI checkbox, then for, same for dialogue, etc. And okay, this one is okay. I mean, in ShedCN, we are doing everything with one command. So all of these things. Then we have adding the font and dark mode background. Again, we are installing this Geist. And then in the layout, we are adding all the stuff manually. And that's fine. But now the rest of the things is not fine. So here we are editing Tailwind Config TS. Um, currently, it should be the CSS file version four is out, but ShedCN didn't update uh, yet that one. So that that's okay also. But now here are adding utilities and helpers. So we're adding utils manually. And there is a bunch of stuff here that they're exporting like focus rings and has error input, etc. And this should be controlled probably by Tailwind and not by some objects arrays inside the utils.ts then we have here the chart utils again bunch of configuration going from some typescript file and not from the tailwind or global css like shedcn is doing and look at the size of this file it's really enormous and then here we have the recommended file structure and that one is okay we are creating a components directory and there we are putting our components ourselves but here they are saying sources directory and it's not only sources in XJS, we could also have app and not sources. So that should be probably like two versions of file structure here. And then we have here dark mode usage. We are just putting dark background gray 950 and uh, I don't know how is that working. I mean, I tried Tremor and I was struggling a little bit. I'll show you now with what. So here I tried some chart. I think it was area chart, this one. And what are we doing? We are installing recharts. Then we are using on window resize TypeScript hook. Then we are adding the component itself inside the components directory. And next thing is here to see the example. So here we're going to code. We have chart data array full of objects, which should come probably from some database. And we are importing our area chart and using it in a client component here like this. So what I want to say is that they are missing the shed CN commands part for their UI library. They need same like shed CN, npx shed CN add area chart and then we need to have everything installed automatically that's just just i mean it's much easier for every developer to do that and to use the cli like in shed cn and i want to show you in the end what i got from the area chart hero or i think it was bar chart but here it is the create next app my application next.js where I created the, yeah, I think this one is actually the bar chart, this one, yes. And as you can see, the background is the gray 950 and that's dark mode. 
So that's really strange that they're using dark, dark mode like that. And uh, I still have to test it out. I'll create a video of like I, I can create some kind of tremor dashboard to see how it looks and how it feels. But this one is, I think, really important. And I guess they're going to work on it to create here some NPX tremor add and then bar chart to add everything. Same like in Shed CN. But I would say overall, it's still a great library. It's still a modern React, good looking library. It's not bootstrap. So they're going in the right way. They're missing the CLI, which is, I think, really important nowadays to just follow up the trends and everything that is happening in our development world. I think I was not too harsh on Tremor. This is just the reality of the world we are living today. It's, let's say, a good critique and a good review of them and comparing with other really powerful UI libraries. So tell me in the comments, what do you think?